Kuzuzampo, this is Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. My name is Pupkem. Our top stories this week. Pay revision for state-owned enterprises to come into effect from 1st December. The national policy launched to address issues and challenges faced by persons with disabilities and Zonka standard testing system to standardize the national language. The pay revision for state-owned enterprises is at par with the civil service. This means the basic pay percentage hike is in between 6 and 35 percent. The finance ministry announced the revision along with a few other changes at the recent Meet the Press session. Salary, the Finance Ministry introduced performance-based variable incentive allowance for the SOEs. The allowance will be based on annual performance of a company. It will include not just the financial aspect but social mandates as well since some companies have more revenue than others. The Finance Ministry is in the process of devising the key indicators for the allowance. The performance-based variable incentive allowance will be 15% for underperformance, 25% for good, 35% for very good, and 50% for excellent. The salary structure in the, uh, in the state-owned enterprise is that uh, some companies used to get a position-specific allowance. That is not applicable to all the companies. And some companies used to get company-specific allowances. And these are mainly uh, tacked to the profit made by the companies. La. So the companies who actually make the profit are getting the, that company-specific allowances, whereas the rest of the companies uh, with a social mandate which doesn't make a profit are actually not getting that. La. In the new pay structure, the 25% corporate allowance is now replaced with 20% housing allowance. So corporate allowance, the the history the rational. Jungkung Ching, Ajay Kachili Tendibe, Tengajagi, corporate allowance to Jangobina, Sijodolo, Shiv the Zugi Bedi Beochin, Shiv the Zugi, Chimki Kalagi Tudi Tobe Sessionella, Debodolong Ajay corporate Ginaludi, Chimki Kalagi Tudi Mindu Sessionella Tarazunzi. Corporate allowance were given in lieu of house, house rent allowances. The minister added that the SOE employees will still be paid higher than the civil servants. Ajay Shiv is Nipudi Masimdalo, Nema Beochin. The SOE employees used to get 7 to 8 percent more than the civil servants. Now the SOE companies, the SOE employees will get uh, 10 to 15 percent more than the general civil servants. But general civil servants, be mindful. General civil servants, this is exclusive of the, the teachers, the periods provided to teachers and health workers. The pay revision will come into effect from 1st December. For BBS News. The opposition says the government has violated the constitution by endorsing the corporate pay revision without the recommendations from a pay commission. Further, the opposition party also shared their disagreement with regard to the withdrawal of corporate allowances, corporate bonuses and the introduction of performances-based allowances in the state-owned enterprises. Talking to BBS, the spokesperson of the opposition party MP Doji Wangji said the government has committed a constitutional error. Unlike the previous pay commission reports, the fourth pay commission report does not include the pay revision of state-owned enterprises. As per Article 30, Section 2 of the Constitution, the pay commission must review and recommend on pay allowances and other emoluments of all public servants, including state-owned enterprises under the Ministry of Finance and Rook Holding and Investments. While establishing the fourth pay commission, the government failed to inform the commission to review the pay revision for the state-owned enterprises. It is not the fault of the fourth pay commission, but it is the cabinet's. <laughs> However, the finance minister Namgit Singh said the government has not violated the constitution of the kingdom. I think they must be uh, cornering around the word public servant. But for that, we have been very mindful. Public servant, as per the Pay Revision Act 2019, is defined as an individual 
who actually draws a salary, benefits and other emoluments uh, from the government consolidated fund. However, in the Pay Revision Act 2019 under scope, however, it says that the capitation fees and stipend for Royal University of Bhutan, subsidies and transfers that is drawn from the government consolidated fund and transferred to the uh, government owned SOEs is for the purpose of meeting their salaries, allowances, benefits are excluded from this act. And that the act also specifies and actually gives a power to the government of the day in, in the act is clearly specified that the revision shall be in accordance with the existing practice by the government and as and when necessary. According to the opposition, the withdrawal of corporate allowances and the introduction of performance-based allowance is wrong and not timely in the absence of a performance-based system in some state-owned enterprises. The opposition also says corporate employees should be entitled to arrears of salaries from 1st of July. The opposition also did not support the idea of doing away with the corporate bonuses. They said the decision would defy the very principles of best practices in the internationally accepted corporate governance. The pay revision for the state-owned enterprises was endorsed by the cabinet on November 26 and the pay revision would be effective from December 1st. Today, there are 38 state-owned enterprises of which 19 are held directly by the Ministry of Finance while remaining under the drug holding and investments. This is Pasan Doji for BBS News. The government is willing to support the future plans of youths involved in the Learn and Earn program in Japan. Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Ring shared this while meeting with the youths who returned to the country last week. Amidst the pertaining issues regarding the Learn and Earn program, the meeting was more focused on the way forward plans for the youths. So far, more than 300 youth who went to Japan through the program have returned to the country. Most of them failed to get working visa. While advising the youths to move on with life, Prime Minister Dr. Lotitsring asked them to cooperate so that the government's intention of supporting them is a success. Please come up with individual plans related to business or startups. We have around five to 6,000 unemployed youths in the country today. We have been supporting them with access to machinery, loans and state lands on lease so that they can carry out agricultural activities. We are ready to provide similar help to you all. The youths welcomed the idea as they too felt it was time to move on. In fact, a few of them have already found jobs. Sring Yangki is one among them. She currently serves as a contract teacher in one of the schools in Bumtang. The Labour Minister met with some of us last year. That time, the Minister informed about the government's employment programs in agriculture and construction sectors. We were asked if we would take up jobs paying 24 to 25,000 ngatum monthly. From that amount, around 14,000 ngatum can be used to pay our loan, while the remaining will meet our other expenses. This is the government's plan, so we should try make use of the opportunity. The Prime Minister also clarified that the government is not in favour of Bhutan Employment Overseas, the private recruitment agent that initiated sending Bhutanese youths to Japan through the Learn and Earn program. Many say the government has been speaking in favour of the agent. There is no point for us to do so. Had the government benefited by the agent, then it is valid to accuse us. We do not have the authority to reprimand the agent. On our part, we rendered help in investigating the case. Meanwhile, two separate criminal cases related to the Learn and Earn program in Japan are in Thimpu District Court and the Office of the Attorney General. Vupe Matsang, this is Pasung Doji for BBS News.
The International Day of Persons with Disabilities is celebrated on the 3rd of December every year to encourage better understanding of people affected by disabilities. Coinciding with the day on Tuesday, the first ever national policy for persons with disabilities was launched. It is also transcribed in Braille. The national policy is expected to benefit persons with disabilities in terms of their equal participation in the mainstream society. It is also to reduce issues and challenges faced by persons with disabilities. Now this policy uh, would rather provide us the opportunity uh, for people with disabilities to take part in all the uh, activities in, in their walks of life. So irrespective of uh, the gender, irrespective of disability, the severity. So every people with disabilities will have uh, their stand in the mainstream society to be the active member and contributing uh, member in the economic development. The policy will address and reduce physical barriers and attitudinal barriers faced by persons with disabilities and their families in accessing services. The policy is one of the most comprehensive policies for persons with disabilities in the region and covers almost all issues and concerns related to them. Today, there are more than 15,000 people with one or more forms of disabilities and face these barriers on a day-to-day -day basis. Meanwhile, the day was also marked in six other districts. Choni Dama for BBS News. Panbang Tunko Court in Shemgang recently passed its judgment on the embezzlement case involving the suspended Goshingap. Along with the GAP, the court also convicted a contractor and two employees of Bhutan Oil Corporation. The Anti-Corruption Commission first began investigating the case in 2016 following a complaint against the GAP for embezzling public funds. Goshingap Sangye Leto has been sentenced to 10 years and 3 months in prison. He was found guilty of 10 counts of embezzlement, solicitation, fraudulent came and other official misconduct. The Tunko court has also ordered him to pay back close to 3 million ngatam. The office of the Attorney General had initially charged the GAP with 27 counts for allegedly embezzling over 10 million ngatam of public funds between 2011 and 2015. During the court proceedings, the court dropped some of the counts against him. Rinchen Drakpa, a private contractor, has been sentenced to two years for participation in the crime. The verdict, however, states he can pay in lieu of his prison term. Manya Dipar and Mun Badur Paudil, two employees of Bhutan Oil Corporation stationed at Gelifu Depot, have been sentenced to three months each. They can also pay in lieu of the prison terms. Initially, the OAG had charged six employees, but the court later acquitted four of them. BBS has learned suspended Goshingap Sangeleto has appealed against the Dunka court's verdict. For Pema Samdup in Shemgang, Pup Game for BBS News. The Royal Civil Service Commission suspended the president of Jimmy Doji Wanchu National Referral Hospital Hub Doji for his involvement in a land case in Tongsa during his term as the Tongsa Zongda. The suspension comes two weeks after the Tongsa District Court convicted the former Zongda to five years in prison for forgery, official misconduct and deception in the land case. The decision was taken at the 24th Special Commission meeting. According to the RCSC, Habdoji shall stand suspended until the completion of the court proceedings. The former Zongda has decided to appeal to the High Court. And a businesswoman in her late 30s is in Pura Police custody for smuggling 5 kilograms of gold into the country. The customs official at the Pura International Airport intercepted the case on 29th November. The woman was carrying 5 gold biscuits weighing a kilogram each in her luggage. She was returning from Bangkok. 
testing Zonka proficiency of an employee or new recruits for any institution in the country is expected to become easier with the development of the Zonka standard testing system. The new testing system is similar to the International English Language Testing System or IELTS which is an international standardized test of English language proficiency. Zonka Standard Testing System, or Zongjuk in short, is a language assessment tool to assess four skills of speaking, writing, listening, and reading Zonka. This is expected to promote a credible Zonka language standard testing system among institutions and organizations which need to carry out Zonka language tests. The system is also one of the success indicators on the key result area of the Zonka Development Commission. With this, the Commission expects to get current status of Zonka usage and its competency rate among Bhutanese. <laughs> He shared that instead of institutions such as the Education Ministry, RUB, RCSC and ECB using their own modes of examination, a common standard testing mechanism is consistent and reliable. This will help maintain consistent Zonka standards and eliminate considerable duplication of work and expenses. Dr. Karma Punzo, who is a research consultant, says this test is also necessary for policy makers whose mode of communication and framing of policies happen in Zonka. <laughs> The the testing system is being developed by DDC with support from NSP, CBS and language experts. Once finished, the system will be put to trial in colleges before being used at offices and institutes. The system is developed in reference to the international based test IELTS, common European reference framework and language evaluation practices in Bhutan. Samson Dolker, BBS News. Bhutan has been receiving an increasing number of tourists every year. The increase in the number is more so among the regional tourists. In 2018 alone, more than 200,000 regional tourists visited Bhutan. To ensure a sustainable tourism industry, the Tourism Council is working on the first ever documented tourism policy. Under the document, there will be guidelines on management of regional tourists and introduction of sustainable development fee or STF for all tourists. In this report, we look at impacts of booming regional tourists. Finsoling is one entry point for regional tourists. While some local residents are reaping the benefits, a few are concerned. Red 
dari jagar gi gari zumchi gi wanda tam do chi bosin khona gi na sikim da gentok chui te pha sikim da gentok darjeling chui gi nam din na khona gi gari parking na jabe te pha lo saising se lamme inki na bosin de ani chapta michu ta an zumchi gi lamlukti devi gi jung jung de sugi ngothole ngachi gi shuru da shuru chi bai da to gi jung di de da do jung chung de be lo chi wale gi masu te nalle pha de sugi siju da lamluk se gadi be zodo ga de suya ta ko kha chi zodo ng sno ye gi te re wale chi ki do yi si shuni la ta modu dara de jung gi phong to le de thap chi ba chin Yan che chi yata sini chi, te ti men di bero e da kung i gari di jodera bero ti na lu da ngaci di di ga kung da ga i se du mo lam ti ba le asha da ta na wako se be le asha da du, ta na kung i gari da chi ka lu da lam ti ba chi ta ngasu di bero e da ngasu na lu jung ta na jun yo ma to di mu zulu na se pen to ni me zulu ni. Another entry point is Paru, one of the most visited tourist destinations in the country. Owing to the increasing number of tourists, the number of hotels and handicraft businesses has increased drastically over the years. From just three handicraft shops in 2006, today there are around 80 handicraft shops in the town. These businesses depend on tourists, both dollar-paying and regional tourists. Apang arigit sa mga zumchi na bawat yung nimchi na lo tet zuni di mga abja labchi di zui tet hinale maba may jia ninja di chigi songyo bang tet ani bawat dalo tet ang china songyo may diso trumpa di may diso di tet season off na lo di kongi jia chale jia namsum pento di sesuni taro ang chigi song manyo may di bawat yung tet tat lunchu gi tashil di matiyo ba tet gya kabijen le umi gi tashil di suin ba tet kong chal chal di su gi kere jab Tetinalu, tetapi ini jawa cium, tetapi ini tak mungkin berbeza juga. Tetapi kita susu di sini, tetapi ini tuh si berbeza. Tetapi dalam tetapi itu anda kongi, tetapi sangka anda tuh jumjumian lah sih. Hotel di sini, kita sama fen tuh di villa. Tetapi kalau macam ni, regional tourist ni apa macam ni macam ni hotel di sana pun macam tu. Tapi main tu macam town dalu di regional hotel, ada macam regional tourist ni ber. Saya boleh beli di hotel itu sekarang lah. Na parul lebih awak cinti hotel leh aja, tuh mula hotel leh aja ini betul. Tengah cili di like lunchoki lunchoki tak sebab di semua orang macam di ngaji hotel di maple lose naran beli lah. Kacau pasal ngaji dati like one month na ninety percent di cinti ngaji lunch regional tourist kira kabar apa tu bola. In Timbu, places such as the Buddha Point and Memorial Chete can be seen flooded with regional tourists. What concerns the Bhutanese most is waste and unruly acts of the tourists around holy places such as recent incident at Dochula. The executive director of Clean Bhutan, Nidup Tsring, said infrastructure and carrying capacity is struggling to keep up with the ever-growing number of tourists. Okay, last uh, six years since the uh, establishment of Clean Bhutan, we did face a lot of problem with the regional tourists because they were they didn't have a guided tour uh, tour and they used to stop anywhere and then they used to just litter everywhere and today i think uh, they are quite well aware but i still think that we need to do more the draft tourism policy which will come into effect towards the end of this year is expected to bring about an amicable solution to all these issues so with this new policy, the <clears throat> those regional tourists will have to abide by the rules. Like they should be provided with a, they should route through a, our local tour operator, and they should be uh, processing their permits through online. And they, with this, then they will be provided with a guided tours. The whole idea is to align it at one as one policy where we charge uh, tourists coming to the country a SDF. So it is true that a SDF will be charged. How much is to be charged is we are still working on this. Uh, that includes uh, for both international and for regional tourists, it should be. So the amount that we are charging is yet to be discussed. The government strongly believes in the policy of high value, low volume to create an image of exclusivity and a high yield for Bhutan. With additional reporting from Sangi Chezom and Sonam Penjo, this is Amdan Dolker for BBS News. It takes considerable ingenuity to come up with innovative ideas, and age is never a barrier.
In this story, we meet a 69-year-old man from Genkergeog in Mongar who has harnessed the power of elements to turn a prayer wheel. Kinzang Jamsu is an expert carpenter. And at this age, he spent most of his leisure time turning prayer wheel, which he made himself. The interesting thing is, one does not have to put in a lot of effort to turn the prayer wheel because it harnesses the power of wind to spread the mantras contained inside. Four scoops made of sijai sheet are mounted on an axle to catch the wind. The prayer wheel can spin without direct human intervention. <laughs> I constructed the prayer wheel through my experience and idea. I didn't do any research from anywhere. I'm happy that it works. When there is strong wind, it rotates well. And with his village located on the hilltop, wind is not a problem. I'm getting old and could not practice dharma. I constructed the prayer wheel for the well-being of all sentient beings. Kinzang spent 200,000 newtum to construct the prayer wheel. Within the wheel are rolls of papers inscribed with mantras and prayers which encapsulate the essence of the teaching and it is turned clockwise thousands of times. Innovation continues to the present day in solar powered wheels electronic prayer wheels hosted on hard drives and even on mobile apps. Sonam Singh, BBS News, Monger. That's all we have for you for this week. Thank you for watching.